leadership. It's what turns the strong-minded, symmetrical faces of the world into legends and what makes the puny, tiny cucks out there hug their office toilets while whimpering, Corporate wife makes my tummy hurt. However, leadership ain't all what it's cracked up to be. You think being line leader in pre-K is living on the easy street until that street you led the class into becomes busy street. The dead eyes peering from an even deader ran over kid will never erase from your vision no matter how much time passes. Oh, you're alpha wolf of the pack now, but just wait until manifest destiny in the form of gold crazy baby and different parents drop a screaming kid on your den's porch and now you're clean and dirty diapers domesticated like the dogs you used to hunt for substance. It'll also make sitting through a stage performance of Our American Cousin very, very difficult. But what happens when your leadership is challenged, much like my interpersonal skills? Well, it won't make it hard for you to order Taco Bell from a drive through but if you're a car ranger, it will make you insult your friends, scream at summer truants trying to do their schoolwork, and fight for kisses from a hairless alien magician all while children are getting nabbed by criminals on your watch. But anywho, my name is James. I'm Nicole. And this is Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. Sentai. Oh, guys, like I said, my name is James, and we have a guest who's never been here before, but is they looking at me like he's crazy? I don't know, but what I do know is don't let go of your handlebars unless you're Mr. Fort Minor. He had the song that said don't ride a bike, but do with handlebars, because if you can, you should, Nicole, shouldn't ya? I have no idea what you just said. I can ride my bike with, with no, no handlebars. handlebars. There you go. There you go. And my queen, my love of always. How are you today? That's right. No. <laughs> and also, we're not introducing guests yet. I have a bit that Sorry. if we introduce the guest, the bit doesn't make sense. Sorry. I'm, I'm you didn't it. tell me about this bit. I'm, I'm your co-host, and oh, I don't know about the bit. Oh, no. The bit. The, the bit. bit. Oh, so watch a Steven Universe episode and then go on Bacon Rule bits. 34 and see Peridot just nope. in a bikini. No. Oh, no. no, 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 Bikin- no, no, no. Bikini Peridot, but just Peridot, uh, is supreme. Okay, but is it just Peridot in a bikini, or is it like sexy Peridot? Uh, either. I know it's out there. Honestly, I've never worn a bikini know. and not felt sexy. I, I gotta but, modulate this person's voice. Oh no. Oh, because I'm secret. Yeah, this and, person's oh, you secret. Fucked it up. Oh, and the no. more I talk, the more work I do. Oh man, I, this, oh. I have to edit this within, oh boy, by midnight tonight because it's going up tonight. I forgot but, to draw, draw a watch on. Nicole. Yeah. What talk about your week? What you been up to? Fuck, I forgot to think about things for the week. Oh, I went to a ski trip oh, yeah. and didn't go skiing. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Did you drink a hot cocoa? I didn't. And that's why you weren't here last week. The the audience already knows where you were. Whoa. I explained it to them. Hey, well you asked how my week was, and that's how it was. It was a trip. That is how th- the day was. Yeah, dude. That's not, was it good? Was it bad? It was fine. Oh, your family's not listening, I, so they won't be offended. I, well, no, I told my mom, I was like, I'm only going because you want me to be there. Yeah, that makes sense. I can't wait for the day I die an untimely oh. death. And then all of a sudden, my family's listening to the podcast and be like, I wish I would have listened sooner. He wouldn't have taken his own life untimely. Okay. If anything, it's overdue. Am I right? High five. No. Thank you, Nicole. You're not welcome. Oh, another one? Oh, thank you, guest. But Nicole, we got to get into our guest. Gross. We got to get into him hard. Because they're they're our biggest like a guests. tauntaun. Yes. Oh my God. They <laughs> smell good on the inside and the outside. <laughs> Wonder what the musk of a t- 
Tauntaun smells of. Could it make you horny? I don't horny? know. What's, what are we doing? We're introducing our guests, but we'll we'll loop them in on how horny a Tauntaun would make you. Yeah, you, you. keep saying guest. Yes. Singular. Uh, well, they are our biggest guest. And I just want to start out by asking them. I'm not even going to introduce them. You'll know them <laughs> once you hear. Okay. <laughs> I have a question for you, guest. You once said, last album, they don't like me to tell this, Debuted at number one, sold more records than Elvis. Shut up. That's what they're telling me. Who is this they? Why wouldn't they want you to talk about your accolades of selling so many records? Should we like unfuse before we start? Yeah, hold on. Let's take off these uh, pertinent rings real quick. Ah! All right. We're two, we're two people again. Wait, you're two people? Oh, we're two wanna, people. Do you want us to? Wait. We, yeah, we're, uh, we're. Were you not in? You're not in Fast and the Furious? N- no. When uh, we oh. Dragon Ball fuse, okay. we do become uh, Chris Bridges, a.k.a. Ludacris. Okay. I, uh, this is where I had something wrong. I yeah. have a Venn diagram of like interests of our guests. You guys mm-hmm. are fans of Austin Powers, though, right? Not separately. No. But when we're fused. Oh, okay. Huge. Okay. Yeah, huge fans. Yes, baby. I like sex English style. Okay. It doesn't work. It doesn't work normally. No, like just like as me. Nah, dude. Okay, okay. But but, our fusion form, Chris, Ludacris, Bridges, absolutely. Well, uh, you guys know their voice. And uh, let me introduce our guest today. Still just one person. You know him as the hardcore hero from Bombay. The madman of Juggalo Championship Wrestling. The one, the only Sabu. I'm kidding, guys. Sabu doesn't like the Austin Power series. He only likes Spy Who Shagged Me. Nicole, little known fact. Did you know the spy who shags me translates to the espionage who fucked me? But I'm kidding, Please guys. Please introduce me. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Returning guest we have. Say, baby! I'm, I'm, I'm Sean Marciniak. You're sad baby? I'm a sad baby, Sean Marciniak. This is my brand. I hope I didn't blow out too hard. I didn't, did I blow that out? Uh, no, it, it seemed okay. fine. It's not like you were just had Taco Bell at a bathroom. I'm kidding, guys. Taco Bell doesn't make you blow your pants out. It just means you're unhealthy and you shouldn't be eating Taco Bell. I've blown my pants out on Taco Bell. Don't what? let Taco Bell get off that easy. They, uh, they got poopy problems if you got poopy problems like already. Oh, guys, you uh, speaking of getting off easily, oh, man, smell that time. Ton, but that is okay <laughs> uh, it'll get you off easy but we have first time guest comedian galore we have hi i'm ashra stolman and i've spent the last 11 minutes pondering an intervention for every single other person in this room Say, uh, baby! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. asher also is uh we could we, we've talked about grindhouse before uh, Asher is the co- uh, co-founder. Oh yeah, is this where yeah. we do our plugs? No, not yet. But like, uh, but it lets the audience know he's always talking up Grindhouse. Yeah. So like, uh, that's, it's an intro. I did the plugs too soon, guys. I'm so no, sorry. No, it's fine. Um, it's oh, it's okay. There's plenty more. I brought a full surge protector of plugs. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's a new kind of plug. No one has brought up those kinds of plugs. What about Glade? Glade? Pfft, plug yep. it in, plug it in, baby. baby, baby. That's what I say to a Tauntaun. <laughs> Stop trying to fuck Tauntauns, <laughs> man. Why is that the theme of this episode? Hey, 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 hey. You know how hot it is inside a, hot, a Tauntaun, right? It's yeah. lukewarm. Oh, yeah. Hard boo. No, I was saying yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won't. I refuse to. <laughs> if they're that warm on the inside, just think about that tender hole they have. All right. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Nicole, did you just cry? <laughs> she does that all the time. I've never, I've never been on an episode where Nicole straight up <laughs> cries. <laughs> I think it's because usually I'm tamer while you're around. Yeah, this and is... then like I'm getting crazier. No, this is picking up. And she want uh, pick it up, pick it up. That copyright laws. Uh, we don't care about copyright. Talking away. Then in that. Oh, case. I don't know what that is. Pick it up, pick it up, what... pick it up. It's the uh, ska cover of Take on Me. Okay. By real, real big fish, real big fish. Whoa, it's a Whoa. big old fish, real, real big. big fish. How big? How big would you say this uh, fish is? If you put it on a, on a reel to reel, it's gonna be a real big fish. Oh, it's so big. If you get slapped by it, it leaves a scar. Oh yes, yes. It's so, it's so, it's it's so large. It's it's sold. It, it's sold in Checkers, which is a a, a fast food spot. 
checkers. Also, <gasps> ska people wear it on Wait. their shoes. Wait, it's yep. so big that they sell don't, it at don't checkers? Do this. Don't do this to me right now. <laughs> Is don't it you because do this checkers? To, don't you do this to me right also, now, James? Like, yes, checkers. <laughs> James, I needed this. Okay, James, checkers I needed this. Is they're, a big They're don't. famous you for. Did. How large their fish is, Nicole. Thank you. No, also oh, you James, should have said Burger King. This to me. Burger King's work, work. food is the big fish. Scott children don't wear Burger King on their sneakers; they wear checkers. Yes, but also, what? but what? They, but what? They You're peeking are now. Sorry. The home of Jaws. Okay, I just want to say, <laughs> uh, no, that's bloody old England. That's where Jaws is living. Oh. From. James Bond. Oh, okay. Moosh. Checkers is a big franchise. Oh, However, goodness. only do in half the country. You, it's it's uh, rallies in the other big half. Big fish. Don't have to do this in a little pond. I mean, big they're also fish in a little coat. Yes. Aye. Uh, they're actually small. They're a small <laughs> franchise in a big pond. They're not Burger King. They're not Burger King. They're not Burger King. Hey, I'm a big fish in a small pond over here. Chia. Saved it. <laughs> guys, Comedy. Guys, listen to this. <laughs> this podcast has a point, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. Most of the time. Wait, it, <laughs> scold? No. <laughs> okay. I have headphones on, so like when two people are talking, they're both talking in mono at me, so oh. they meld together. Ew, that's the kissing disease, you freak. Oh, mono. Ooh, uh, it's, <sighs> it's weird why they call it mono, but two people take to kiss. Yo, man, you never it should kiss. be called stereo. Yeah, but one person gets it. And I'll say right now, if you're good at kissing, oh. you, you only need one. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I I can kiss myself, dude. Happy Dang. Happy Valentine's Day to me. <laughs> Who are you kissing on the stroke of midnight? And who are you stroking at he midnight? He literally just said himself. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm... Yeah, uh, sure. Um, same. I mean, I mean myself, not Sean. Yeah. Okay. We could go kiss Sonic if we wanted to. Oh, that's what we're doing on. Yeah. We're doing a date night, seeing Sonic. That's cute as hell. Chia. Oh wait, <laughs> I meant to do both hands up. It mi- looked like I did an offensive salute, and no one would have known about <laughs> it because we're on an audio medium. Uh, guys, I like. Li- I went to like so break this out. down, do out. like a goal, but I only lifted one arm a up. Dab. So it's just like even then, it's like you're raising it's a, a hand. Half dab. Oh, I can close this. Half dab. Yeah. If I was like a child rapper. Like 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 a little bow wow. Mm-hmm. I'd be called half dab. Yeah, dude. Uh, you can yeah, be. Dude. I'm I'm 29. No, but uh, just like we said, it's an audio medium. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's going on? I'm 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 nine years old. I love Pokemon and you're peeking, man. When you start screaming, go back here. I or just like don't man. scream. <laughs> when Sean started his rap career, he really peaked. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. I swear, there's more to me than puns. How many? But you are. I've got a lot of them. Four or five deep now. I I brought a whole notepad. Um, oh my god. Oh, you're you're the you're the gentleman I I have hitched so much of my comedy to. What have I done? He's good. What are Broken. you? He's got a quick mind. I I, I I loathe so much about you, Osher. I can't live without um, you. I love you. I, I love you so much. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Because this is our Valentine. Oh, wait. No, technically our Valentine's Day episode. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, James. Uh, guys, happy Valentine to you as well. Happy Valentine's wow, Day, I Nicole. Feel so lonely. <laughs> Don't tell her happy oh, Valentine's yeah. Day. What? She's my property. I oh, kid, guys. I don't think true. of her as property, except she's my queen, so I'm her property. So not at all. I like how you said, I, I don't think of it as her as property, but I am proud. What you said made sense. I was trying Chill. to tear you down. I But I'll get back up again. Yeah. You're never going to tear me down. You got it. You got Piss. there, guys. Yo, we're pissing the night it. away. I always used to think it was, I thought they were saying like overhead, like, uh, but get, I get overhead, like an overhead projector. I was like, man, they love school. <laughs> I get knocked down. I'm in the AV club. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, you missed a perfect transition to this week's episode that Chia! we watched. Talking about schoolwork. Whoa. Oh, yes. But before we get into that, Asher, this is your first time on the show. What is your experience with Super Sentai or even Power Rangers? Well, I watched absolutely no Power Rangers growing up. Really? I watched absolutely no Super Sentai growing up because they didn't show it on whatever. Okay, when I was a kid, I watched only cartoons. The live action kids shows spooked the fuck out of me. It was just like I couldn't empathize with those human 
human <laughs> figures. I, it had to be this abstract concept of a human for me to have any emotional attachment to it whatsoever. What uh, What were your big like kid shows? Well, I watched Pokemon. Classic. I watched Digimon. Yes. I also watched Yugi Mon. <laughs> I watched all the other Mons too. Have you seen the new uh, Digimon Pokemon? Like the, the 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 feud starting back up a little bit online. All those feuds were just bizarre schemes cooked up to sell product. We all know that, right? We're all adults. We all we all know that like Pokemon and Digimon were really like independently developed properties mm. and there is no rivalry and nobody hates each other except four year olds. To me it always kind of felt like like those like benign rivalries. They feel like like sports rivalries. Like, I've always said the reason I love I, I I enjoy watching professional sports is because it lets me be emotional without being like deeply emotional. Like I can get angry and then walk it off. I can get sad about a lo- like losing a game and walk it off, but I still get to feel those emotions. And that's the same thing like with those rivalries. Like it doesn't really mean anything, but it's nice to get super into something that really has no stakes. That's why I kill animals. What? <laughs> no, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christmas, you monster. I mean, that's why I watch reality TV. Yeah, same thing. It's like, cool, this is... We, we all know that nobody's actually getting married off The Bachelor. They're dating each other for three months and then, like, calling it quits because it turns out when you're put together, like, as a couple on a reality TV show, it doesn't mean jack shit. Less than organic, maybe. Yeah. I think there's still one, or maybe they just recently divorced. There was one couple that was yeah. together for a long time. Yeah, I, I forget their names, but yeah, they were like, and like the, they were like one of the first Bachelors, I think. Which may... They might have had to like sign a contract to say like, we'll keep paying you a salary. You just have to stay married. So there's that mystique there, the mirage. Mm-hmm. The Rebecca, kind of like how they pay Stamos. K-pop singers to be single. Same thing. So yeah. there's the mystique Wait, of like, what? Yeah. you could date the BTS boys because they're single, baby. They're not, they're paid to stay single? That's in their contract? Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, that's J-pop freaky. was like that for a while too. Word. I didn't know that. That freaks me out a little bit. Is that normal to be freaked out by that a little bit? You can be freaked out by whatever you want. This is a safe, judgment-free zone. All right, dope. Guys, I'm terrified of ECW wrestler New Jack. Oh, nice, man. Can we talk about this? New Jack scares me so much because, like, I can't. I, I don't want to say this on a podcast because he might hear me. Who cares, man? He can't find you. I'm terrified of New Jack because, like, I ride, I'll ride the bus or, like, public transportation and I could see me fi- like running into New Jack on a bus, and also New Jack is terrifying. You hear you hear about the story. Um, he's doing like an indie show, and mm-hmm. the guys like I mean, there's the mass transit incident. Oh, that's what I was gonna bring up too, but w- we don't need one. to bring that up. No, not at all. But there's another time where like it was another new guy. He's like, hey, I want a little bit of like he's he's working over New Jack a little stiff. Uh, which if you're not a wrestling fan, stiff means like the punches are a little harder than they need to be. You're just like you're you're not. You know, it's less of a show. It's more just you're really hitting the guy. So there's this indie guy. He's working New Jack stiff. And New Jack fucking stabs the dude. Like, New Jack's version of, like, a stiff punch is okay. straight up stabbing the dude in the ring. Okay. New Jack scares the shit out of me. Oh, that's not good for him, yeah. especially when he almost murdered someone. No. but Wait, was it, was it New Jack and Mass Transit? It was New Jack and Mass Transit. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. That dude almost died. He's only 16. I mean, but to be fair, that's that guy lied about his oh, age. Yeah, yeah. He like l- said lied he was about 19. It, yes. He was like, I think he was like 350, 400 pounds. Like he was a, so he looked like he was 19, 20. He looked like a full grown adult. He was a big guy, um, but was just like, had no training, uh, no experience in the ring. This was his first match. Yeah. He lied his way. Like, no, I've, I've been trained here and there. I've worked these matches. I'm 19. I'm not 16. Like that's one of the that's the one that like when you like you hear all the facts I, mean, I don't know I wasn't there but I think I'm on New Jack's side on mass transit he worked him a little over a little too much but it was New Jack and ECW also what I've learned from listening to pro wrestling podcasts and YouTube's if you were like interested in getting color and bleeding for the match if you've never done it before don't ask your opponent to cut you like the mass transit incident. The kid asked New Jack, "Hey, I've never, I want, I want, I want color, but I've never done it. Uh, can you cut me?" And so New Jack cut him. Yeah, because you don't know how deep your like. If you're yeah. cutting yourself, you know how deep you're going. You can feel mm-hmm. that, but yeah. yeah, yeah, don't. That's something. I mean, it's yeah. T- take care of yourself. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, DTA. Don't trust anyone. 
This has just become a wrestling podcast now. So it's a Kirby pod, a Jennifer Lopez podcast. That's in bloopers. A Kirby podcast. Bloopers again. I end up providing a new deck. I haven't spoken during like that entire time. I'd say yes, it's a wrestling. I'm so, podcast so I'm so now. sorry. I'm so sorry. So, I just keep assuming that if I don't say anything, eventually you'll wear yourself out. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm, no, we want you to interject. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm, I don't I'm, know what the fuck any of that. Right. Like I don't know what. I, you know what we're, we're done talking hey man I, I, I exercise what my happened? fear uh, I'm not afraid of new deck anymore we can move oh, on oh yeah that's how we got into this yeah I'm a, yeah my yeah hey what are you hey uh, uh, Asher Nicole what are y'all afraid what's of up? yo man what's, how you doing <laughs> what's, what's your fear <laughs> I'm not telling you what I was gonna use it against you yeah curses exactly darn it my my plans have been foiled. I'm afraid of just someone giving me a hundred dollar bill out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, are I'm, you? Yes, <laughs> terrified. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I, I I don't have that kind of money. Dang it, Asher. I've got a neighbor who walks past my apartment at seven o'clock every day with a dog, and that dog mm. is always barking and doesn't stop barking, oh, and gosh. its bark sounds like a human crying for help. <laughs> and my fear is that. In a couple of years, that neighbor is going to be walking me because she's transformed me into a dog, yeah. and my cries for help go unheard because everyone thinks I'm just a dog. Question: Is this neighbor an alchemist? Do you think this dog is a chimera? I don't open my window when this neighbor passes. <laughs> smart, smart. Because I don't, I don't want her to see is me. The dog, a half six year old child. <laughs> I oh my god, that's the fourth. That's the fourth episode. I'm, we're, we'll talk about Sentai. I started watching it. I couldn't sleep last night, so I started picking. I need to finish. I've never finished Full Metal Alchemist, so I'm like, I'm rewatching it. And like, I see the Shao Tucker episode. Uh, sorry, spoilers. Watch the show. It's a great show. Okay, but, but man, do you that's like sad. the regular or Brotherhood version? I'm watching Brotherhood right now. See, because everyone says Brotherhood is better, but I watched the regular version first and then went to watch Brotherhood, and I was mm-hmm. like, I can't do it now. That's, that's why I, I, like, for my deep research uh, in my laboratory, which is Google. Uh-huh. Uh, Your bathroom. Yes. Google while I poo-poo. Lavatory. Mm. <laughs> ah. Thank you, James. <laughs> sad baby. <laughs> that's my new catchphrase, sad baby. That's yeah. your wrestler name? Yeah, that's my wrestler name. Got it. Uh, yep. And uh, when me and Asha fuse, we are Def Jam rapper Ludacris. Uh, that's canon now. Fuck. Oh, no. Yeah, but it was like Brotherhood's longer, but mm-hmm. more adheres to the plot, where mm-hmm. Alchemist is like a little is shorter. Less plot, but more philosophy. So, like, I think my plan is to watch Brotherhood first, get all that juicy, juicy plot. Mm-hmm, and then, mm-hmm, like, when I'm like, mm-hmm. I kind of want to watch Full Metal again, but I don't want to watch the whole thing. That's when I watch just Alchemist. Wait, is f- are these just re-edits of the same show, or? It's the same, like, series, are but it was like a, like a reboot. Okay, yeah. okay. Like it's, it's the same. It is the same manga, uh, manga, and it's the same. Yeah, it's the same storylines. Like, are they redrawn or are they re-edited? I don't know. Uh, I know the voice oh, actors man. are different. Yeah. I mean, it would have to be re reanimated. Yeah, just for like the extra stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, because because Alchemist came out first, then Brotherhood came out. It gets yeah. reanimated. Yo, ducks, mm-hmm. quack. Quack. Someone quack, in my family quack. was trying to say anime and said Anaheim. Oh, that's adorable. No, she said Anaheim. Anaheim. And we were like, is she trying to say Anaheim? <laughs> or is she trying to say anime? And I'm out of this conversation. <laughs> and I'm going to. So we can finally yes, talk about get Sentai. to the point of the episode then. Thank if you. you're not here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You've never seen Sentai. You've never seen Power Rangers. What did you think of this? I mean, it was kind of... I, I, I did a lot of homework, okay? I, I sort of set my expectations, and this more than met my expectations. Yeah. Like, I love the whole Japanese aesthetic of, well, like, practical effects monsters. I love the whole um, vaguely low-budget, but vaguely, like, over-ambitiousness yeah. of it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not like they were going all out on those special effects, but... They were they were drawn with a little bit of heart. Oh yeah, I think I'd argue the reason they don't go out all out on the special effects is because the costumes are so elaborate in Sentai and it's like in, in, in a Sentai like this, like the shoulder pads, the the blue Bozok, the uh, general, I forget his name, uh, uh, Gynamo. Gynamo, thank you. I love Gynamo, but I, and I love his co- I love the big shoulder pads, the way his head kind of ducks into his shoulder. It's so 
abstract. It's so non-human. It's just very like I, 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 that's it. If you like, if there's a pie chart of budget, it all goes to costume. I mean, I'm geeking out on all the concepting because we yeah. watched. I don't know if this has even been mentioned once so far, but we watched a Car Rangers episode. Yes. Oh yeah, we Car Rangers. And all of the aesthetics of like all the protagonists, they're they're all vaguely car themed. I mean, the vaguely <laughs> being the operative term here, and I don't know why I'm the one explaining this, but like <laughs> one of them has a gun that looks I guess kind of like an exhaust pipe or something like that. Yeah. Like all mm. of their attacks are like mildly car themed. <laughs> And like, there's somebody who got paid a lot of money to draw up all the concept art. I, I love that guy. I want to meet that guy. I want to shake his hand. There are books. We have a book. It's just all the concept art of every single villain. And we don't have the one for Car Ranger, but we'll show you afterwards of just past seasons. Yeah. But today we watched, I believe, episode 24, Urgent Launch, New Leader bow, bow, bow. of Car Ranger. Yes. And yeah, let's get into some notes. I think one of the things this does, which is one of the things I love so much about a comedy series like Car Rangers, uh, where it is, we've discussed before, it's a comedy sentai, is that it's, uh, this episode's about homework and watermelons. Mm -hmm. And like in five minutes, the highest stakes in the world. It <laughs> is so intense. It, the, the, the title, if it doesn't give it away, it's the Red Ranger and the Green Ranger. They're fighting each other. For leadership, the Green Ranger challenges the Red Ranger's compassion, which is a deep, which is basically like, hey, I don't think you're human enough to be a leader. That's a real, that's like a deep burn. And it's so, the, the stakes are through the roof. They're at each other. These te this team is at each other's throats. Their friendship is at stake. It shattered. Over homework, children's homework, and a watermelon splitting contest. That's what that's what's on the line, but like yeah. the human situation. Wait, was it water oh. splitting? Watermelon oh, splitting. Do you normally do a synopsis? I normally have yeah, an I episode jumped, summary. I the ball. I'm sorry. Uh, which I'll do a quick synopsis. Okay. But normally I have a long, elaborate episode summary written, but today needed to be a short episode. So I was like, that usually takes like 15 minutes. All right, I'm sorry, bud. Okay, but a quick synopsis. As we said, Red Ranger and Green Ranger, they're fighting at each other's throats. Well, T.T. Terurin, he yeah. loves homework. He's the smartest Bozak ever. He comes down to the planet, Ursh, and- Ursh? Yeah, that's what the Bozak <laughs> call it. Oh, is it? Okay, yes. I thought you just fucked up. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you'll know it when I fuck up, baby. And oh. they're like, whoa, wow, he's helping the kids do homework? And then all of a sudden, every single adult is like, we need- to do children's homework. They don't need to do it. Why would they? And if you guys want to jump in at Let, any okay, point. Okay, so let's be clear on one thing. The monster is not helping the children with their homework. The monster is doing the children's homework for them. Yes. Which is truly the most diabolical of schemes because he's <laughs> keeping our children from learning the proper way, the hard way, by doing the effort. Yes. Asher, we are friends. I want you to know you sound like the kid who asked the teacher, did you collect our homework? I was that kid. Oh. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I do that in D and D. Mm. When uh, Corey doesn't roll, I'm like, "Well, you crit. You should be doing double damage." But that's because if something happens to me, I want yeah. him to give me the same respect. Understandable. Like when I'm like, "Hey, my coiset should be giving me magical resistance." I I keep forgetting that. Can we revamp and like retool last episode and give me more health? He's like, "Yeah, I guess that's fine." Totally fair. Homework, though? So, yeah, the monster does the kid's homework and later on demands that the homework be done only in exchange for watermelons, which I found patently ridiculous because oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys know about this, but there's a little place called a supermarket where you can bring <laughs> bring your, your hard-earned yen. They don't have money. Well, there's jobs. Who's going to hire a Bozak, Asher? Uh, I think in an episode, one of them might make noodles Who like he hired a bozak i think i think <laughs> in a later episode one of them gets disowned or leaves the organization Aww. and then has to yeah yes yes this is something that every listener should look forward to like yeah. i want there to be a sentai version of the lilo and stitch cartoon where someone just like 
finds their place, the like monster's place in society. Oh, Hana means family. I'm yeah. really excited oh, okay. for your new podcast, Strictly Speaking Stitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Streaming on Spotify. Uh, yeah. This is streaming Stitcher. on Spotify. Yeah, I, I avoided it purposefully because there was humor in it. Guys, I'm not funny. I'm just here. Okay, You're so can funny. we all agree that? Shut up! You what shut are your you talking you shut about your fucking you mouth. You shut your and, mouth. And let's finish this goddamn. Remember us. on Duke Nukem when you <laughs> called them Stephanie and Stephanie? Yeah, I love my daughters. Yeah, guys. Okay, crossover alert. You leave me and my daughter, Stephanie and Stephanie Nini, alone? I'm pretty also sure that those weren't the names, but it's along so. those I got, lines. I'll, I'll watch it again. I'll check on it. But yeah, so we we get these Bozak. They're on the ground floor. And then all of a sudden, these flyers start springing about. The, the Bozak are throwing them around. They have money to make up flyers, but they don't have money to buy watermelon. Ooh, Asher's on to something. Okay, okay. Kinko's ain't cheap. You just don't pay. Okay. They just made them and then left. Oh, they maybe they have a friend who's their mom works at yeah. an office, and yep. then that's how they're they're getting all their they shit. Get, they got a temp. A I mean, temp you can afford job. a lot of watermelons with an office job, yep. but the mom has it's yeah, a they friend's don't. mom yeah. has it, so they don't have the money. And like you can't, I don't know, man. Oh yeah, I get it. When you're when you're a kid, you can ask your parents to spend a lot of money on a lot of cool stuff, but they'll be like, "We're gonna spend all this money on clothing that you don't want instead." Oh. And I can be like, "The opportunity cost of that clothing was this cool stuff that I actually want." And my parents will be like, "Asher, how do you know microeconomics? Get back in, <laughs> get back in your room." See, as a kid, the only clothes I wanted was. Orange pants, just bright orange pants that were zip offs that I got at Goodwill, and a shirt with a metal dragon on it. That's all I needed. Nicole, what were your favorite clothes as a kid? Uh, <laughs> as a kid or as like a young teen? Oh, whichever. Because I'm choosing young teen. Just all the Invader Zim shirts you could ever want. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Okay. <laughs> what about you guys? Tauntaun. Okay. <laughs> For the longest time, I wore a white shirt and uh, black pants, and now I wear a black shirt and black pants. Nice. Yes, that is called character development. <laughs> I feel like that's the opposite. <laughs> no, it's not. He went from white shirt okay. to black shirt. Got it. All right. So what happened to this episode? Okay. And then finally, <laughs> we find out. I thought that was out. what happened. That the kids are being turned into watermelons and their yeah. wigs are getting split. They were going to be. They were caged. You, you see them straight up in like watermelon helmets and watermelon face paint. Yeah. yeah. And, the, I was, yeah and, and and the fight between, I don't know if we touched on why the the, uh, the rangers were fighting between each other. No. It was, can I, may I? Yes, go for it. it yeah, we did. I mean, yeah, we kind of did. We kind of did. but Homework. Like, it's homework. Specifically, the blue, yellow, and pink ranger were off swimming while red and green were left doing work. It's hot. And they catch this new Bozok, uh, Tarurin? Tarurin? Tarurin. Uh, Tarurin, yes. Tarurin, yeah. yeah. Uh, they catch this Tarurin doing this homework, and Green's like, we should be helping kids. And Red takes the most, one of the most unnecessarily, like, angsty lone wolf moments to just, like, look out into the ocean and be <laughs> like, no, yeah, they have to do it themselves. We can't help them, or they'll never learn. <laughs> Dude, it's math homework. This is not the soapbox to like lone wolf on. And it's summer homework. It's, like summer homework doesn't fucking matter. Absolutely not. It's um it's it's why I love it's why I love comedy like like this, like just taking nothing and like this through this situa like situational comedy. You know, we're it's coming from these characters, Minoru wanting to be this hero. Like, he, like wanting to be this white knight, essentially. I think you mean a green knight. Wow, you sounded like Wario. Ah, Wario number one. I've been working on it in the shower. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it on you. You better get in that tauntaun, baby. Oh, no. Hide your emotions there. Mario. Except you won't be able to hide that erection you have. Oh, tauntaun. Time to look and get my tauntaun erection. Um... <laughs> 
And, the, and, and, and then the opposite end of the Red Ranger is just like being accused of a lack of compassion because he won't help. Like, like because he's so like damaged because he's so angsty. Is that I don't know if that's a character description. In this whole process, nobody talks to the kids to find out what they want. No, the kids do want them to just do the homework. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if I were a kid, honestly, that might have been what I wanted. Yeah, but it's 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 taking the simplest thing. A monster's doing homework. Maybe we should do the homework and escalating it through their character yeah, prisms, through the, through the, yeah, through the lens of their characters, and escalating it into this huge confrontation. And then, of spoiler alert, they do make up at the end, and it, yeah, and it's very also over the top dramatic it's beautiful yeah he comes back and minoru says oh you came back you're compassionate you care for me and he's like no i just saw this flyer and then minoru's like don't be shy <laughs> you love me it's so also sweet. somewhere between there and then um they transform into the the ranger form and they do some fighting of monsters it's really quite inconsequential truly um but like but it, uh i forgot my thing i'm dumb I'm a dumb person. You're not dumb. Uh, You're funny. You You're your money, baby. Mouth. You don't even talk to me unless you know me. I do know you. Oh, okay then. Never mind. Uh, 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 oh shoot. Um, okay, I don't have a. I don't. I don't have a point. I'm and then sorry. they're friends again. Sure. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Bozox, like uh, uh, Zionetta, Zionetta, Zonetta, Zonetta. Thank you, Zonetta, and the other, and, and Gynamo and all the main Bozox have no evil plan, really. They just want to have a watermelon splitting contest. Yeah. That's it. There is so much nothing happening that it heightens this dumb, dumb fight between red and green. It's beautiful. Do any of you even have an idea how you would judge a watermelon splitting contest? Like, is it most beautiful split? Is it fastest, most efficient? Mm -hmm. Please go on. It seems like they were going off. Just if it tasted good after being split. Which has nothing to do with the split. Yeah. Let me tell you, watermelons taste good when you cut <laughs> them open. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I wish Zonetta did the splits in the, that bikini of hers. Oh, yeah, there's also a, a gratuitous Zonetta bikini shot. Chia! It goes... I mean, that's why they were doing the contest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Because they wanted this idol to be in a bikini. Wow, zowie. the Richie hiker wanted to see her in a bikini. Yeah, and he was rubbing her shoulder in that fantasy, just like a friggin' creep. It was so weird. I, I've never wanted to see a phantom hand so much than that. Like, it was hover hand, baby. Oh, I want to see that. I wanted that hover around on his hand. Oh gosh, it was so creepy. It was so. But it's like it's weird because it's. I don't know. I don't know what was happening on set. It makes sense for me, for the Bozox to be creepy because even though they're doing nothing in this episode, they are still villains. Yeah. And to ruin, so to ruin's plan was to do kids' homework in exchange for watermelons. The kids bring the wrong type of watermelons. They bring pre-cut watermelons. So to ruin's backup plan is to turn the children themselves into watermelons. That's when he becomes evil, and that's when he needs to be stopped. Which, by the way, so to ruin's super villain powers. Good at homework and turns children into watermelons. Am I a crazy person? That's not yes. related. Uh, understandable, but those are not related <laughs> powers. What? No. On what? What spectrum of? It is part of his costume, though. It is. He so... has little watermelon slice earrings. He has watermelon slice earrings. He should not have complained when he asked for watermelon and got watermelon slices. That's his brand. Yeah, he should have those uh, bubble gum spheres that look like watermelons. True story. It's just so, like, there was so much. And again, I enjoy the way they have to shoehorn. I feel like halfway through the episode, they just like, oh, right, the Bozox should be evil at some point so we can inconsequential robot fight, right? Well, they scheme, man, yeah. but, okay. So in a previous episode, we see that the Bozok can turn children into other Bozok. Oh, word. At, like through planting them into dirt and then watering them. Oh, word. I missed that. Okay. But that's the only reason why I'm thinking like, oh, they can turn these kids into watermelons. I'm kind of thinking maybe they're not. Maybe they are just going to split a kid's head open. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. By the way, yeah. If, if you're wondering, should I watch this episode? If just for the shot, the like the like fantasy of a bunch of children 
dressed as watermelons, about to get their heads split open. They just have like watermelon helmets on, basically. It's adorable. Oh and we gosh. get the best joke, just such a yeah. amazing joke in this show. So the kids, they get trapped in this cage. Mm-hmm. And then Ichiro, I don't think we say his name correctly, but the yeah. Pegasus, Junior Pegasus, he says, guys, I think we should cry to make sure they know we're scared. And then they start crying. In unison. Wah! Yes. Like, in perfect unison, they go, hi. And all cry, like 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 if it was a dance routine. Like they are syn- synchronized <laughs> crying. All right, guys, on the count of three, let's all cry. One, two, three. What? 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 And then TT says to the kids, that's not going to help. Yeah. And then instantly uh, Ichiru says, guys, it's not going to help. And then they all stop. <laughs> not even, no, it's not even, guys, it's not going to help. It's, he says it's not going to yes, help. Yeah. The evil monster who we're definitely not for just told us to stop crying. So yeah, because it's not going to help. Like they, <laughs> they just buy into it immediately. I love it. It's, oh. I've seen two episodes of Car Rangers so far. That's the best joke I've ever seen. Chia! So I good. This episode is so cute. Yeah. Like them helping with their homework mm. and bringing watermelon and Signal Man doing his homework <laughs> was so cute. And like the friendship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Minoru like holding the Red yeah. Ranger's hands and like staring him deeply in the eyes. Yeah. Ugh. This was a very good Valentine's Day episode. Oh, it was. I didn't even think about it like while watching it. Like, well, because Valent- it's not all, not all relationships are romantic and or sexual. Sometimes it's just you know. God, I wish they were though. Fuck, you tell me. I want. I want to fuck that tauntaun. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there was well, and because like. Uh, it, it, when they break down, I don't. Uh, when they, you know, well, I think one of the big cliches that's accurate about comedy is often it's either ordinary people in extraordinary situations or extraordinary people in ordinary situations. This has both. Yeah, but I focus so much on the latter because again, the stakes for like the Bozox is so low, but for the heroes is so high, and it's really only that high because the heroes are so melodramatic with their characterizations of themselves. They go so far with the hero Aminaru and the lone wolf Red Ranger. Who's See, ma- no, I like immediately was like, oh, this just happened at work. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, this shit just happened where it's like the not leader um, is criticized by everyone else. And then the, the leader's like, you know what? You just do it. And then you're like, uh, shit. <laughs> so on the topic of low stakes, I've prepared a game for you all. Yes. Um, which is, uh, I guess, our first game of this episode. Probably the only one. We're a little low on time. Asher prepared three segments, he's told me. So I brought a $1 oh, bill, damn. and this is potentially for Sean. This, this game is called Sean. Did you do your homework? Oh, because this is a homework-themed episode. Yes. Are you serious? So I printed out a list (laughs) of every single Sentai series name, and I'm going to read seven of them. And this is actually for everyone. I want you to pick a sound, say that sound if you've heard of that Sentai series. And Sean, if you get more than anyone else in the room, you win my dollar. Is that, it's not fair because he knows how badly I need a dollar. (laughs) Have you all picked your sound? Uh, My sound's going to be... What does a tantan say? Uh, let's just do boink. All right. Mimi. <laughs> and Sean? Um, fuck. Sounds good. Uh, okay, I'm going to change mine to... <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> I'll probably just shorten mine to the F word. So the first the first one we have is 1975 seminal Himitsu Sentai Gorenger. <laughs> All right, one point, James. I don't know any of these. Next one we have is 1991's Chojin Sentai Jetman. Two points, James. I only come I come on this show to be ex- to experience Sentai. I've never seen Sentai. Go say game. Sentai Die Ranger. <laughs> what are the rules? Well, that's not fair. Wait, hold on. Which one's that? 1993. Oh, that doesn't help me. That's a year, not a thing. That I'm surprised Nicole didn't get this. And that was that's our favorite series. Which one's Die? Oh, well, I've never seen it, have I? No. Fuck. Number four, Tokosu Sentai Deca Ranger. You're making these up Mimi. with your mind. 
Uh, clearly not. And James is complicit. <laughs> Next I, what, one. What I'm fearing is that the first part he is changing and will switch with another. I'm not usually familiar with like the blank Sentai and then the Ranger part. The Ranger part I'm always aware mm. of. I'll just read the last part then. I okay. am far too familiar with being fucked over, which is happening you're right peaking, now. You're peeking, man. You're peeking. I'm sorry. 2009, Shinkenger. You're... <laughs> Shinkenger? That was Samurai, baby. Damn it. 2011, <laughs> Gokaiger. No. Me, me. Oh, yeah, that was Nicole. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> One got... point for Nicole. And finally, 2020's Kira Major. I asked you to come Wait, on today. These were real. I asked you. <laughs> Of course they're real. I did my homework. <laughs> you could have just been boink boink whatever yours was every this single was one. And, <laughs> and that's our game of Sean, did you do your homework? Fuck. He didn't. What do you mean I didn't? Oh, I, <laughs> I come on the show to watch a You got to you got to I'm uh, so sorry. I, we also I'm, need we have questions to ask him. Please. Do you have more segments that we got to get through? Um I've I've got a really bad segment that we're going to skip and a really good segment. Okay, let's do this good one. All right, so that brings us to our second segment. It's called Morph Suit Minute. Ooh. So one of the things that like I really love about Sentai, I, I say having never seen a Sentai <laughs> episode in my life, is the excessive use of spandex. Yeah. And one of the great things we got out of Japan was the Morph Suit, a.k.a. the Zentai, if you will, which is this full-body spandex suit. Use them for green screens, use yeah. them for ninja tricks, ha. use them for whatever. So to I scare thought, your parents. I thought this That's podcast I needs say. a segment where we talk about the various antics people get up to in these morph suits. Scare your parents is a good one. So I found a story on Vice. <laughs> on the 22nd of June 2019, the British town of Woolaston held its annual village fete. Midway through the day, an unexpected visitor came onto the scene. He was wearing a checkerboard morph suit, bo, and he bo, was bo. demanding da, 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 people da, da, pay da, da. him a pound to guess his identity. And oh. then at the end of the day, after people had guessed his identity, he'd gotten money from children. He'd gotten money from pensioners. He left, never revealed his identity, still unknown to this day. Whoa. Pissed. That's like that dude who hijacked like Chicago TV one night back in the eighties. Oh, with Max a mask. Yeah. Oh gosh. Explain. <laughs> I'm afraid. So, so I'm afraid of New Jack. And I'm afraid, afraid of Max Headroom. Max Headroom. It was a TV show, and then it be, he became like a MTV personality. The idea was that he sort of ex it was it was this really weird human like mask. Um, but he was supposed to like. He kind of t t t t talked like he was in the c c computer, and it was, was it was supposed to be like early virtual reality. This is like late '80s, early '90s that he really picked up steam. During uh, two different broadcasts, someone hacked into the Chicago, uh, I think it was like ABC or some like major network, mm -hmm. dressed as this like if you look back on it, kind of creepy virtual reality character, and just took over the airwaves. The first broadcast was to say tune into I think it was Monday Night Football in a couple of minutes, and then. He came back on, and I think he was talking. He was talking trash on local politicians. He was getting spanked on live television. All this, like, really, like, like, kind of like Eric Andre style, like, mm -hmm. absurdist fuck you comedy. Totally pirate. No, to this day, no one knows who pulled off the quote unquote Max Headroom incident. Chia, awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we have two segments. One, Dapu. How old do you think he is? You mean how old is the person playing him, or how old, how old is, is the character? I kind of want to say either five hundred years or twelve minutes. Okay, that's <laughs> what a lot of people say. We don't know, but I, I think he's got pubes, guys. He's hairless, but I think he shaves everywhere besides his dangle prank. Even though we see we it in an episode, it. yeah. Da pubes. Have we done da pubes yeah, yet? No, I, I was. That's one of my notes. <laughs> that's on the notes. Yeah, that's da pube. And then, James, I love you. Sean was here not like three for like three minutes and already talking in unison with James. It was it was scary. <laughs> okay, so every single episode that we have a new guest on, we ask them this. In Car Ranger, they didn't really talk about it a lot. There's something called car magic. That's where their powers come from. It's not like they have the power of cars. It's just like constellations in the stars that look like cars. That's where they get their power from. 
So if you could get your power from anything as a Sentai, what would it be? Mine was dead bugs because there's so many of them. Nicole's was, I think, street sharks and then, well, it was no, ass and then. Mine ass, baby. <laughs> I think you changed it to street sharks once. Probably. Okay. And then what was yours, Sean? I think it was this. I think it was the L. Uh, I, I I stuck it too close. Oh, a public like, transit. I think it was. Yes. Yeah, I think it was public transit. Mass transit, baby. Never forget. And so, like the established ones are things like samurai or like dinosaurs yeah. and things like that. It, you it, literally anything you want it to be. My sister's was like cigarette butts, maybe. Oh, that's no, one. that was Jose. Oh, that's a really okay. good one. I'm kind of feeling Illinois politicians. Ooh. <laughs> because boy, howdy, do they have a wide variety of different energies. Awesome, man. Your Illinois politics. So what in that would be... That's a good one. In Car Ranger, you see them change with that. Their changer is putting a key into their wrist thing and then they crank it and then they become Car Rangers. What would your changer look like? Like with dead Stabbing bugs? a Chicago flag into my navel. Yes, oh, no. man. That's oh, badass. God. I know there's more to Illinois than Chicago, but I mean, come on. Yeah. 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 So uh, kind of like you're a little more common rider because they have the belts. Oh, yeah. I know what this is. If you would have talked about common rider, <laughs> I would have buzzed in. So everyone's against is me. Common rider Guy. RX. And I know what that is. Oh my! I, I yeah. that might be something I I forget. Oh, but, I got another idea though, which could be Chicago yes. style food. Because holy Ooh, shit, that's a good you one. could have hot dog ranger, pizza ranger, Italian beef ranger, nice. yeah. popcorn ranger. Okay, well then, what's that charger look like? Oh, I think you just have to guzzle it. Okay. Whatever it is, you you shove a pizza into your mouth. You got a charger that keeps your pizza slice hot. You got a charger that keeps your hot dog all warm and toasty. Oh, nice. And then. Whichever one you want to do, what would your kind of special move be? Ooh. Taking into consideration the power. All right, let's let's stick with the Illinois politicians for this one because my power is to unleash a torrent of red tape. Ooh. <laughs> nice. That's very good. Hell yeah. That's really good. Nice. <laughs> Over here with public transit. Not Yo, man. I'm kidding. Bad. I oh, love what you. was your power? Uh taking a pee wherever you want. No, it was uh <laughs> Not showing up in time. Not yet. I'm always running late. So like the battle is already <laughs> done and then you show up and you're like, I'm here, guys. Yeah, I'm ready so to help. What happened? Yeah. So you're always kind of well rested, but a little stressed out. Yeah. I, it's, it's like I'm well rested on the ride, but I'm winded by the time I show up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Those are fucking great. Yeah, bud. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell we don't yeah. have time to do an improv. Normally we do that right. to integrate what we need donations for, but... Oh, plugs, plugs, plugs. Yes, guys. Let's get into plugs. Okay. It, it looks like we got a minute, 40 seconds. So huh. Sean and I are on an improv team called Grindhouse. We do improvised monster movies. Sean will yell at me if I say improvised horror movies. Sean yeah. and I are also working on a podcast <laughs> called The Best We've Got, where we have three or two guests on bringing cool things into the studio, and they each try and convince us that the thing they brought is the best. Oh, guys, I want to be <laughs> on this podcast, and if you need a place to record. Yeah, no, we're probably, we're probably going to reach out to you to engineer. Yes! Yeah. I'm working on a show <laughs> in perpetuity called um, Step Into My Parlor Games, mm -hmm. where I get my comedy friends to play a bunch of games at my apartment and film it. It's, it's pretty fucking good. It, it's so lovely. It's one of the most wholesome like comedy shows you can mm -hmm. get to. Uh, follow that. Also, uh, so Grindhouse is finally on Facebook. Uh, G R I N D H A U S. Uh, so Grind and then House is spelled H A U S. Mm -hmm. um, we're on Facebook. Uh, we haven't done a lot, but like when we have shows, we'll post about it there. Um, the best we've got is on Facebook, and then Asher has Step Into My Parlor Games. Uh, Again, one of the most beautiful, like, sweet, lovely shows you can watch. You want to see people assemble a Lego set without pictures or instructions? This is a show for you. Heck yeah. So fun. I, through the rest of the month, uh, uh, through the rest of the month of February, Fridays at the Laugh Out Loud Theater uh, in Lincoln Park, uh, come out to see Comedy Court. It's improvised Judge Judy. It's a lot Ooh. of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. It's a great show. Yeah. So, yeah, those are, yeah, that's my jazz. Oh, yeah. Step into my parlor games, April 19th, Sunday, 1 p.m., Crowd Theater. And uh, every other month, so not... This February, uh, so in March, uh, Tuesdays at the Playground is also Phantom Pilots. I play there as well. We do a lot. Oh, Jeez. my goodness. Yeah. Nicole. What's up, what, what do you have to pull, plug? It's quick. I got DarlingHomeBody.com, Patreon.com slash DarlingHomeBody, DarlingHomeBody on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. 
and Crumb Bumps on Webtoon. Yeah. Hey, guys, if you haven't listened to last week's episode where it was just me, please listen to it. It's a very good episode. <laughs> it's not just me being bonkers. There's uh, segments that I wrote out. It's very good. <laughs> but hey, listen to my other podcast at MLMPod.com. We have more podcasts coming. We have a Patreon coming. Ooh, it's going to be nice. Also, listen to my rap music under Marshland Monster, which you can download for free at MLMPod.com. Donate as well. MLMPod.com forward slash donate. I believe that's all I have. Thank you very much. Sean for coming back and thank you, thank you very much Asher we would love to have you back glad to be here yes and yeah, yeah, I yeah, hope yeah, to yeah. see oh and real quick man yeah, you buddy. had yeah, a baby. friggin secret podcast and you never told oh. me about it I'm gonna smack you with a tauntaun dang dung that's but. it that's the close yeah th- that's the oh, that's yeah guys good. I've been James I'm Nicole Asher Sean and mm. we've been mostly, mostly speaking sentai, sentai. Oh man, Sean's gonna make this so hard to edit, and it needs to be out tonight. You're bye welcome. bye, guys. It's okay, there's 30 <laughs> minutes you can cut. Uh, no, there's not. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Oh man, I love McConaughey. Who doesn't love McConaughey? Uh, Beach Bums. Oh, they should. He's their patron saint of acting. Yeah. Acting is reacting. Uh, monster oh. in laws. Wow. Oh. It was that with Jennifer Love or Jennifer Lopez. Lopez. Was it Jennifer Lopez? I thought it was. Yes. I think it is. But I love this, that movie. Uh, guys, bloopers, baby. <laughs> uh, this is a Jennifer Lopez podcast now. Oh, except shit. Except it was his mom. Yeah, so played by. Technically, that reference is wrong. Jane Meryl Fonda? Street? Meryl Street. Was it? Was it Jane Fonda? I don't know, guys. It wasn't Meryl Street. Is this Street. a Mario podcast? Because look at all those bloopers. Oh. What? Wait, are there oh, bloopers so in. Cute. Yeah, they're the squiddies. Oh, I, did, I never knew. They're so cute. Oh, yeah. They, they are like. Mario has really cute enemies. No, Kirby does. Yes. Ooh. I don't even think those are enemies, to be honest. Those are just. Sonic for Hire touched on it, but I think they're right. He's just murdering it's just people. Like, mm-hmm. They're I don't just know. Bozak. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but let's let's get into the real <laughs> show. Okay. <laughs> I was cr- I was circling it back around. Ooh, yeah. yeah, and I just want to talk about Kirby and Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> we, uh, we'll we'll loop it into the normal convo. Okay, sure. All right. Okay. 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 Ooh.